got it. Ooh, oh, 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 oh my gosh. Go on, sir. Go on and remove them. We're gonna give a special thanks to FX Air Guns. The M3 power right here. PCP air rifles, guys, able to use and eliminate some of these pests. We go on removal out of here. They're filming a TV show featuring us, which is really, really awesome, all the way from New York. And the TV show is gonna be airing in Germany, behind the scenes of a TV shoot. And um, you're gonna see some catching. We're gonna stay out of their way. Yeah, this is the director and cameraman from that TV show. I was telling you guys about from New York, filming a German special on the Iguana Man and the Iguana Ninja. We're bringing it back out, guys, the fly reel. And this is what I love about my job. You never know who you're going to be meeting, what you're going to be doing. But one thing we do know is we're going to be having some fun. A little bit extra, but honestly, I like the action. And it really gets the iguanas tired, you know? the sound. I like the action. Okay, I like action, too. No, they don't know me. None of these iguanas have, they've probably seen us, but they never encountered us, like, up close. A lot of people have a misconception thinking that iguanas know us. And you guys might know us because you guys watch YouTube. Iguanas don't, but iguanas in general are very wary and can be very skittish. Behind the scenes, there's usually a camera person, makeup person, sound person, director, um, usually multiple camera people at, at once, honestly. In an instance where we don't want to go in the water, CJ, we're just going to have to hold the line and kind of just keep him at bay. Yeah. But this is good just in case he does have that extra energy. Yeah. He won't be able to, you know, kind of like break us off or something. They've been doing that lately like crazy. All right, all right. An iguana, like, it's new, and we have a way higher chance of catching them. Right, so. There you go, I found it. This is basically a, a way to catch them alive, so the catch pole. And the whole thing is, is we want to put this around his head, and then hopefully we'll be able to, like, snare him or snag him. And then we'll be able to get control over him. Yeah, easier said than done. Iguanas, are, like I said, are skittish and smart. So we're going to need a little bit of luck on our side today. But the Catch Bowl 3000 do be putting in work. And it do be bagging those silly iguanas. Some private jobs that we're going to go to where we do have the approval to use air rifles. And yeah. Um, it really depends on like the area and the place. Because most of the places in the homes are just like this tight niche. You don't have like a, a dead on shot or you're like a, a good sniper like ourselves and you have a couple of couples but it just depends on the situation where you just have it being out well i call this the hands down catch pole 3000 you can catch any dragon anywhere any place any time it doesn't matter you can catch them so you call iguanas dragons yes they are american dragons they can get as long as tall as me or as long as me i'm like 5'11 they can weigh up to like 15, possibly 20 pounds. It's ridiculous. That's ridiculous. You can come out to the house drinking a cup of coffee, and you got a big dragon on your roof. Okay, so basically, um, we get contracted local. Yeah, no, okay. So basically, we get contracted uh, from local residents, homeowners associations, and businesses in this area to deal with uh, a newly found pest here in Florida. You've probably seen it in the news and the newspapers, but iguanas gone wild and they're thriving out here in the south florida ecosystem so they're eating a lot of flowers they're digging poles they're by pools making mess what kind of business or since when are you doing that because i mean iguanas a pest is not just kind of okay. yeah so just recently in the last 10 years we've seen numbers go way up with iguanas we don't know if things are just warming up here or if there's a lot of plants or what but the lizards' populations have exploded out of control the last couple of years, so it's becoming a real big problem. Great, that was good. And since when are you doing it? Just my information. Since when is it? I've been, I've been hunting iguanas uh, for the last six years, and I've been hunting them professionally for the last three years. Okay, all right, that's good. Oh, well, it's okay. Okay, that was great here. That was perfect. And then we asked um, CJ. So right now they're getting sound bites of us so they can put it together and make a nice 10 minute show I believe it's going to be on the news or something like that in Germany But they're getting sound bites and they're going to splice all the footage they get together 
However, we're filming a vlog for y'all behind the scenes, so make sure you smash the like button right now. very healthy like the most healthiest meat you can eat honestly it's it's because they all they eat is grass fruits and vegetables oh really they're very opportunistic yeah but i heard that they have salmonella. it's very organic but didn't i read that they have salmonella <laughs> that's in their poop oh okay. i mean if with any meat if you clean it properly you have no worries but does it taste like alligator meat because well it tastes from like chicken to alligator meat because the alligator meat is terrible i mean well so depending on who cooked it for you because oh, it, it, okay. it, not that is you got to remember that's not a piece of meat that is normally cooked on an everyday basis same thing with iguana it's like a delicacy it's like a, oh. a once in a blue moon type of thing like like in jamaica we eat curry goat that's like that is <laughs> the soundbite interview went great and after that they wanted to see some action so we took them to one of our jobs seeing a couple big iguanas basking hanging out decided to try to catch them with the pole first they wanted us to do a dramatic walk and then back the iguana remember it's like a little bit count the history It's crazy how brazen these iguanas are. Crazy things go right up to people's homes, eat all their ornamental plants, and sometimes try to get inside the houses. This tree that the iguana is hiding under is mere twigs at this point. Silly iguanas like to eat bougainvillea and hibiscus bushes. It's their favorite. That's why they were so good in the pet trade. Because you literally have people in New York on the bus with like iguanas that their tails are like all the way down to my leg just chilling right here. And all they do is just chill. They're, if you train them that's a, properly, they'll just chill there all day. All How much will you get for this one? This one is going into the bag. The handy dandy iguana bag. And uh, taken for questions. Got this one right here by a bush. Ian's trying to eat some flowers. Missing piece of his tail. Is this a baby? Yeah, yeah. it's a baby. That's a nice one right here. 90% of iguana's diet is plant matter. Fruits, vegetables, flowers, bushes, grass. Shoot, I even heard they eat bark. And then at the end of the week, send them the invoice and he'll go ahead and send us a uh, payment. And then look at the, the ground, the foundation at the bottom. This is the water where the rock starts. 
since the iguanas come, they've digged out. They go under and they dig out these claws. They're digging holes to lay eggs and to hide away from the cold. And uh, females, like that right there, breeding season 50, 60, 70 eggs. Small iguanas will come out. I mean, shoot, they can turn it to a bathroom. Jeez. For real, for real, for real. Okay. Start from here and end up under the house because all that heat, what they're looking for is the heat. So they lay eggs because they need a, a nice warm den to incubate the eggs, incubate themselves, and just hide away for long periods of time. God, nah, but we'll show you guys more examples of them digging by homes and stuff later. Okay. Right now, we're just, we just saw these guys. So. Me and CJ are on our way to check out a water pump station that we've done removal at just to see what it's like over there. But on the way, we saw a bunch of iguanas, so we decided to stop, take a look. We spotted a giant orange one, but he was smart and crawled all the way to the top over the water and out of range. Just like yum 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 yum. Want to want a piece of it? Oh my gosh! Oh, it's raining iguanas. I think we upset him by showing off his uh, snack plant right here. Oh my God. You gotta watch out too. Have you ever gotten an iguana on your head? Lady, you have no idea. It, it, it rains iguanas in Florida. Like I said, our mission was to go check out the pump, but on our way, there's a canal, and there used to be a lot of iguanas out there. So we walked with caution. Iguana on. Iguana on. It's always dangerous handling wild iguanas. Now this one was kind of small. I didn't want him to get off, so I just kind of grabbed it. Just didn't really get too tired. He was going back for the hole. Just came out to get some food. Some Typically when you see iguanas, they're usually green. This one is on the more red-orange side. Just as we mentioned, we believe that there's a breeding season. Breeding colors. Is this one pregnant? Oh. There's no telling, but we know in the winter time, usually they'll have eggs. Iguanas are weird. Uh, Here in January, Florida, February. the breeding season begins in fall. And I believe the egg season is sometime in winter, usually December through February. I don't know if breeding season starts early or not, but we're starting to see a lot more activity. here to kind of keep this structure strong and, and keep it working. A lot of progress, everybody's happy. We're putting these dinosaurs in the bag. The little ones, if they're there, like and you're there and you start getting them, they'll know. They'll go far away. Then out of nowhere, we seen a pack of iguanas that came out from underneath the bush. And it was insane, man. They were pretty aggressive. You guys can see right here this is a serious population a lot of these iguanas live in holes right here on the bank and they come out once or twice a day to kind of bask eat some food however if we try catching them they'll often scurry same thing if we were to shoot them once you start shooting at them all the iguanas are gonna run away they're not gonna sit there we need to find out a way how we can trap these lizards all at once multiple Maybe a trap of some sort. Maybe with a net or with a cage. Drop some comments and let us know. Shout out to the news people that came out here all the way from Germany. It's pretty sick. I mean, they wanted to do an interview, meet us. And they also came out in the field to see it in person. If you want to come out in the field, see it in person, 
help us out, remove some of these invasive species, hit me up. Put my contact information in the description down below. It's such a delicate procedure at this specific point. Like I said, these iguanas scurry into the bushes within seconds once you scare them. We need help with an idea for a trap. At this point, that mess of 20 is turning into just a few left. And thankfully, some of the bigger ones kind of stuck around. The small, timid ones, well, they shied away. As CJ securing this one, my eyes are locked on a giant that's deep, deep over there, just kind of camouflaging. Yeah, down there is steep. You got a crab walk so you don't lose balance and, uh, you know, go into a sinkhole or something. But that's almost 10 pounds of pure muscle right there. He almost broke the pole. Thankfully, he went inside the water and we were able to kind of hang on. You see that? You see that cement? That's where, that's where grass used to be. It used to be this high. Big hole in the ground. We're going to have to repair this at some point. It's no secret that invasive iguanas can cause a lot of damage. If you or a loved one is dealing with an invasive iguana infestation, feel free to contact me. Maybe we can come out there and make a difference. So, you know, they, you know, they punish kids. They be whooping. They be whooping. So, so it's like, it's a, it's a flashback, you know. It's just a flashback. And just a <laughs> but no, you would rather get whipped by the tail than get bit by these guys right here. That's why they're so, they're so like good survivors. Their tail could come off, as just like this one. His tail came off, and they could just regrow it. And things just happen. You know, you can't control Mother Nature. And you know, they this uh, Florida is the perfect ecosystem for these reptiles. Them open for like a second, turn their back. One one male, one female gets in there. Combination of all of that. Pets uh, gone wild. Pets released. Uh, them coming on the cargo ships, and then eventually they met in the wild. I think a giant, like a 15, 16 pound iguana was very, like it was mid -breed, breeding season, and he was like in full force of not caring about anything else, just breeding and domination. He will definitely mess up with them too. If you ever try to corner it or try to catch it, they will try to defend themselves with their mouths and their tails. Yeah. And it, 